Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Well, hello and welcome back to the Pet Parenting Reset. I am so glad you are joining me. Today's podcast, I'm talking about the 10 things. I've learned a lot, but 10 of the main things that I have learned as a positive reinforcement dog trainer. Uh, So I I think the title is Diaries of a Dog Trainer. (laughs) Now, I do have 10 things, and I actually have a bonus thing for you because I I, I wrote my list and then of course, as all good ideas do, I was in the shower, <laughs> it came to me in the shower and I was like, oh man, I really need to add this, but I couldn't think of anything that I should take off the list. So I have a bonus for you and let me tell you, it's it's it, like, you need, you need to hear it. So um, let's get right in to today's podcast because we're, we're coming up on the end. We're getting close to the end of the first season. Um, I, I don't know how I came up with this. I just decided 30 episodes is more than enough for one season. So, um, we're, <laughs> we're on episode 27 right now. Uh, so we're getting close to the end of the first season and hopefully this, well, actually I, I, I have something, I, I hope, I, I hope it's going to work out. It's going to be really, really amazing for the start of the second season. But anyway, let's get right to this Diaries of a Dog Trainer uh, episode where I actually have 11 things that I have learned that I want to share with you. So very first thing I want to share with you is that most, this was the very first thing that came to me when I, when I uh, started putting this list together, I was like above everything else. Like this was the very first thing that came to me. And that is that most dogs are under exercised. Um, it's no surprise to me. I, let's be honest. Most humans are under exercised, at least in, you know, our country and in most of the first world countries. I, yeah, we're, so under exercised and that has translated to our dogs. Um, they are so incredibly under exercised. You know, if you have a German shepherd and you're walking them once a day for 20 minutes, Lord have mercy. That dog has got to be bored out of their mind. Uh, so yeah, I, that's just, you know, one example off the top of my head, but goodness gracious, you know, when we moved, I knew that just inherit because we moved into a bigger house and we have a bigger yard. Kim was going to get more exercise than she had in our last house. And that is absolutely true, but that doesn't mean that we can, you know, stop all of the other things that we're doing to help exercise our dogs. It's just like literally the, I mean, in every single house I go into, it is the very first thing um, I talk about because it is one of the most overlooked things. And one of the one of the things that can have the biggest impact, um, on your dog and your relationship with your dog. So the second thing is enrichment. Most dogs don't get much enrichment and really with enrichment, all we really, all we're wanting to do is provide stimulation in the environment for our dog, right? So they're not sitting in the living room while you're at work with nothing going on around them and nothing to do. Of course, they're going to get into, I don't know, your closet and chew up your shoes, or they're going to get, you know, figure out a way to get into the trash can and like whatever it may be, because, you know, every dog is different. Um, of, co- of course, these things are going to happen because we need to be providing environmental enrichment in addition to the physical enrichment that we just talked about with exercise. The third thing is positivity. And of course I have to throw this one in, right? Because first of all, there are still so many dog trainers out there that are not using positive reinforcement methods. And that is like, that is the biggest shame. Honestly, more than anything, I feel like people's egos just get in the way. Like they have been doing something for so long, uh, or, you know, that's just what they learn. So it's too hard for people to like get out of their own way and realize that there are better ways, um, to, to get the job done. And 
I mean, like significantly <laughs> better ways, right? But it's not just in, when I say positivity, I'm not just talking about using positive reinforcement methods. I am actually talking about just the overall feel, like the energy vibe that you are giving off, um, your outlook on life, right? It's hard. I know it's hard because let me tell you, 10, 15 years ago, I was a negative nil. I was negative and I still struggle with overcoming negativity, but I have seen the huge impact that just shifting my mindset has created in my life and the life of those around me. And when we talk about just shifting our mindset into being more positive, even if we're just trying this around our dogs, it's going to flow into other areas of our lives. It, like just inherently, that's how it works. And being more positive around our dog is going to elicit a better response from them. It's going to create a more impactful and meaningful bond with them. There is so much like this. I don't want this podcast to be all about, you know, manifesting or, uh, you know, it, that's not it. Like, yes, I believe in that, but no, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about changing your mindset and changing your attitude because literally everything else is a reflection of your mindset and attitude. So if you are negative, then all of the things around you are going to be pretty darn negative too. I'm, I'm li literally living proof of that. I have seen the changes around me and it's, it's just incredible. So shifting our mindset and being more positive and intentionally, I, I talk about this a lot on my other channel. I have a, um, an organization channel as well on YouTube and rumble motivation does not come to us. We have to create motivation. And that is, that's the same thing. Like the, that, that is the same mindset I'm talking about with being positive. Motivation doesn't come to us. We create it. Positivity doesn't come to us. We create it. And that is one of, as far as like a life lesson, the, probably the biggest thing I've learned from positive reinforcement dog training is that when we, when we look at the science behind positive reinforcement and we take that and we generalize it through everything in our life, holy moly, how our life changes, right? So um, again, I don't want to stay too long on any one of these topics because I want to get through the whole list. The fourth one, the, the fourth thing I've learned is consistency. And of course, this 100% has to do with training your dog because not only do you need to be consistent in the cue that you're giving your dog, the behavior you are um, requiring for that cue, right? So if we are asking for a sit and our dog lays down, we're not going to reward that because that's not what we were asking for, right? So we're going to, we need to be consistent with the cue. We need to be consistent with the behavior we're requiring. We need to be consistent with the boundaries in our home. We need everyone in the home to be on the same page. That's another form of consistency. And again, if I bring it full circle back around to us because it literally everything about dog training does uh, circle back around to us as humans is that we need to be consistent with ourselves too because when we are forming habits, when we are trying to make change in our lives, if we let ourselves slip up, if we say, oh, well, this time I don't have to, you are messing with, you are so messing with your brain. It's the same thing with your dog. If you ask them for a specific cue, let's say a sit, like I was just talking about, and they give you a down and you reward that, you are so messing up what your dog thinks you want. Like you're not going, you are, it's, it's not good. Like you, you're confusing the heck out of your dog. And when you do that for yourself, you're confusing the heck out of your brain. And you're like, your brain's like, yeah, she's going to be fine. She's not going to ever ever need to, nah, she'll always back down. We have to be consistent in so many different ways. So, um, that is the fourth thing on the list. Uh, the fifth thing on the list is that training is lifelong. 
So a lot of people think, oh, I'm going to take my dog to training. Uh, you know, I'm going to go get them trained. It's been a, you know, a few weeks, whatever, have, whether you go to a class, or you have a trainer come into your home and good, now my dog is trained. We're good. We're done. No, 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 no. It's just like with us. If we ever want to form some sort of habit in our lives, we can't do it a few times and say, I'm good. Nope. We have to reinforce it over our lifetime. Of course, that reinforcement needs to be much more significant in the beginning to build the behavior, to build the habit, right? To build that cue in your dog, whatever it may be. And then we can be a little bit more sporadic throughout, you know, our lifetime, but we always, always need to continue to train and continue to reward the behavior we want to see. Um, you know, a lot of times I, I, I see people a lot. They're like, man, my dog has been potty trained for years. And now, you know, they're eight, eight years old, 10 years old, whatever. And they're all of a sudden having accidents in the house. And like, my dog is supposed to be potty trained. Well, how have you, have you been reinforcing that? I, praise is free guy. Like I still, to this day, my dog, when she goes potty outside, I, I, I praise her. And it's just like, I don't even think about it. It is just something I do. And yeah, I, it may seem too simple to be effective, but it is so effective. I praise her when she goes potty outside because that is the behavior I want to see. So, um, yeah, it's, it's training is lifelong and working on yourself to become a better person is lifelong. Working on the bond between you and your dog is lifelong long. Okay, number six on, ooh, that was wrong. Number six on the list. If you're, if you're watching the video, you know that I put up the wrong number of fingers. <laughs> um, anyway, number six on the list is to live in the moment. I think that this is possibly one of the absolute best things that we could ever learn from our dogs is to live in the moment. It is so hard for us as humans. I get it. I know. Um, it, it, we have to be really, really intentional with this and it, seems to come, it does come so naturally to our dogs. And I think that that is a trait in our dogs to absolutely look up to. I admire that our dogs can do this. Of course, they don't have all of the same responsibilities and social pressures and, you know, just this constant flood of information coming out at them all day, <laughs> all the time, every day. I get that. They, they just inherently live a simpler life, but still the, the, that our dogs have the ability to live in the moment and appreciate what is right now without like, they don't fear death. They don't even necessarily realize that, you know, death is impending and, and Yes, on a on a soul level, I think they do realize that their time in in their body on this earth the way they are currently isn't forever, but I just they have I don't know, the the, abil the ability that they have to live in the moment is something uh, so many people aspire to. I know I'm one of them and I think um, you know, the more intentional we can be about living in the moment, even if it is just when we're with our dog, right? Like we can appreciate that they are living in the moment and take that time to intentionally live in the moment with them. I, it, it's just a really incredible thing. And that's of course, not something that you have to be a dog trainer to learn or know about. Um, but it is one of the things that as I have been exposed to more and more and more and more dogs, that is just, it's just an incredible, incredible gift that they have, um, that I, I think, I think we, we should all aspire to. Okay. Number seven, of course, you know, this list would not be complete <laughs> for me if I didn't say to feed your dog better. Of course, that also translates to us and that we should be eating better. Um, one thing that my husband said to me pretty early on in our relationship that I did not take to heart until recently, uh, is that you only need to be shopping on the perimeter of a grocery store. Like everything in the middle of a grocery store is horrible, terrible, processed, chemical junk. And he is so right. Of course, I can't help but still, you know, get some things <laughs> 
from the middle of the grocery store. I'm trying. I am certainly eating a lot better than I was 10 years ago. But for me and for a lot of people I know in the pet space, doing better for their dogs, feeding their dogs better, um, improving their dog's life through diet and nutrition then trickles over <laughs> into their lives and into their diet and their their nutrition. And that has absolutely uh, been the case for me. But uh, we have, we, for me, we have to start with our dogs. And for some of us, you can start with yourself and then realize that, oh, wow, why am I feeding this kibble crap to my dog, right? So it's it, it, like there is a balance there for sure. But I have seen so many, not just my dog. I have helped. It's one of the things I talk about in the very first session with all of my in-home clients is nutrition for their dog. And more often than not, the pet parents that I work with are like, oh my gosh, yes, I absolutely want to learn more about nutrition. I absolutely want to feed my dog a healthier diet. Um, and every single one of them that I have helped through this transition to a fresh food diet, we have seen some incredible changes in their dogs, not just physically, but also emotionally and behaviorally. Because here's the thing, when you're not feeling good, think about when you're sick or you're just feeling crummy, you are not making the best decisions for yourself. You are grumpy, you are moody, you're probably, you're definitely not in a learning headspace. You're probably not doing your best um, at work or at school, whatever it may be, because you feel crummy. And that is like a perpetual state for dogs and cats that are eating a kibble dry food diet. So there have been, I have, I have just personally witnessed so many amazing changes in dogs who have uh, received improved nutrition. And through that improvement of their nutrition, as we are training, I see like I can, I can tell the difference. They are picking things up easier. Uh, they are, they're learning new cues quicker, faster, easier. They understand they, like their brain is processing things. Like they are, their brain is functioning on more cylinders than they had available before. It's, it's incredible. So feeding a better food, feeding a better diet, improving nutrition, that's number seven on my list. Okay, number eight, and I've kind of been talking about this all along, but number eight is taking care of yourself too. And, you know, I've talked about the power of positivity in your life and how motivation, you have to create motivation that doesn't come to you and consistency and all the things and nutrition, how all of these things affect you as a pet parent. But one thing that I do see is that, that, that shift in, in our brain often happens because we care so much for our dog or for our cat, um, our pets in general. And th that shift in our brain happens when we realize that we need to take care of ourselves to be able to take care of our pets in the way they deserve. We need to take care of ourselves so that we are here to take care of our pets in the way that they deserve, right? That that's powerful to me. I, I was actually just listening to another podcast, totally not about animals or anything. Um, but he he was talking about that the guest on the podcast was talking about how you would think that being faced with death would create a huge so many changes in your life. For example, and the example he gave was that somebody has a heart attack. And they have to undergo surgery. They have a stent put in or they have a bypass, whatever it may be. And they come out of that surgery and they realized they could have and very possibly would have died without, you know, the advancements that we have in medicine today, right? Like they were not, they were, they were almost dead. They were knocking on death's door, right? And yes, for a short period of time, those people may make some big changes in their lives. But overall, when you when you go back to this population of people, for example, heart attack victims, within about six months, 90% of them 
according to the, the guest I was listening to on this podcast, 90% of them are right back to their old habits. Um, not exercising, not eating healthy, yada, 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 whatever it may be, smoking if you were a smoker. They're right back to those same old habits. And researchers have studied this, and it's because the idea of death is too overwhelming for us as humans. The idea of death is just too overwhelming, and we re we resort back to our old habits and behaviors because they're comforting. And that lingering like thought of death is just entirely too much so we go back to where we're comfortable we can't do it but when we see that when th that idea that i want to be here i want to be the best person i can be to take care of the best dog right that i have in front of me right now because my dog is amazing or my cat is amazing or whatever it may be that is not necessarily that that same level right so that i have seen makes a lot, like a lot of people can make really big changes in their lives because they want to be, they want to be the person their dog sees them as, you know, what is that? What is that uh, meme? Be the person your dog thinks you are, right? Like that it's a thing. And that is much more attainable because it's not as scary. It's not something that our brain says, whoa, 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 whoa. That is way too much. I can't handle that. Go back go back. Right. So I, that's what I've seen. So take care of yourself too. That's, that's the next thing <laughs> I'm getting to. I, I think I'm spending too much time on these. Sorry guys. I'm going to, I'm going to push through here. Number nine is that every dog is different. I mentioned this earlier. Every dog is different. Now, when it comes to the principles of training, positive reinforcement training, the principles are the same for every dog, for every cat, for every human, for every mammal, right? Positive reinforcement is the same. The principles are the same. However, every dog is different. Every cat is different. Every person is different. So it's really interesting. I was, um, gosh, it was a while ago now. I was talking to another dog trainer and I said, do you notice a difference in how you train men and women? Because well, let's be real. Um, and, and I wind up saying this to pretty much everyone I train. I'm not here to train your dog. I'm here to train you because one, the human's behavior has to change in order for the dog's behavior to change. And also the best person to train your dog is you. So my job is to shift your mindset and give you the tools necessary to train with your dog. That's ultimately my job. And in that, <laughs> in that, yes, every, every single dog is different. Every dog, while I use the same principles and I give the same principles and the same training techniques to everyone, the way we apply them with different dogs may be different because your dog may learn a little bit differently than my dog my dog's motivation may not be the same as your dog's motivation, right? So it's, it's, it's a weird thing because the principles stay the same, but the dog always changes. And every dog, like you, you just, it's not, it's, it, <laughs> I, it's, it's, it's even a weird thing for me to try to explain because in, on one hand, it's all the same. And on the other hand, it's all different. I think, I don't know, I think you kind of get where I'm going with that, though. The principles are the same, but how we apply the principles, totally different um, with every dog. So, and and every dog just learns in a different way. Um, so that's, it, it's fun in that respect uh, that, you know, trying to figure out a dog and figure out their motivation and figure out what's going to work for them and what isn't going to work for them. And it is a trial and error a lot of times, but um it, it, yeah, that's what makes it fun. But the, the fact that every dog is different is definitely something that I've learned. Number 10, don't forget, we have a bonus. I have a bonus for you um, because I couldn't, I, I made my list and then I was like, I have to include this one more thing. So stick around for that. But number 10 is patience. Lord, 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 help me. Um, not, <laughs> I, okay. Patience is something that, oh, Gosh, 
I, I definitely struggled with for a long period of time before I became a dog trainer. Let's just say that patience is something that has come to me. I, I feel like I'm going to get off on a tangent here again. I feel like that learning the principles of dog training and working with dogs, working with animals has made such a huge, like my whole life is different. My whole outlook on life is different. How I approach things is different. How I, I, I feel like I have gained so much wisdom in trying to understand dogs and cats that translates into everyday life. I feel like I would not have gained as much wisdom, not just information, but wisdom if I had just continued my life without pursuing a career helping animals. And and I'm not saying that everyone now needs to go out and pursue a career helping animals. I think when you find what your true passion in life is, that's where you can really gain wisdom, not just information, because it's not like, okay, I've got to, I've got to learn this for my job or whatever it may be. Like this is just information that I have to learn and know it's, it unlocks a part of you that I don't like you would not have been unlocked if you hadn't, if you hadn't found that passion. So for me, patience is one of those things that, yeah, I studied it. I studied patience as it relates to dog training, because we have to be patient with our dogs. Our dog, we don't speak the same language as our dogs do, right? We have to, we have to be abundantly patient with them, even more so than with other humans that speak the same language as us because of that learning process, right? When we are trying to teach our dog, we have to give them room to process and understand and give them room to say, is this what you want? Oh no, that's not what you want. Well, how about this? Is that what you want? We have to give them space. We have to give them room to think through things on their own and make their own decisions. And so, yeah, I studied that and I understood that, but it wasn't until I took all of this knowledge and said, I realized this is what I'm passionate about, that it kind of turned into more of what I consider wisdom versus information or even just knowledge. Knowledge and wisdom are are different, very, very different things. And in doing so, I have become a more patient person. I am certainly very patient with my dog. I am I, I feel like I am even more patient with my cats. And I have somehow realized that I am now even more patient with other humans. I definitely, like, don't get me wrong. There are times where my patience is very, very thin. But <laughs> that's that's human, right? That is to be human. That's part of being human. But I can take a step back and say, I can realize how important it is in life to have patience because if I don't give others, whether it's my dog, my cats, dogs, I'm training other people. If I don't give them room to think through, how are they going to learn? Right. I can't force somebody to do something and expect them to learn why they should have made that choice. So patience is so, so yeah. That's what I decided for number 10. All right. So here we are at the bonus. The bonus is drum roll. Am I going to insert a drum roll? I don't know. <laughs> drum roll. So the bonus is that it is never about the breed of the dog. I said earlier, every dog is different, but I wanted to specifically state that it is not about the breed. There are a lot of breed stereotypes out there, and it seems to kind of go through breeds. Um, It it seems to kind of go through breeds, maybe generationally, um, sometimes a little bit longer than that. 
it's not about the breed at all. It's always about the owner because, I mean, even if you look right now, look at how, you know, 40 years ago, German shepherds were demonized, right? Oh, they were these horrible, horrible dogs. And look at them now, right? They're, the dog hasn't changed. The, the breed hasn't changed. We've changed. It is never about the breed. That's, that's all I want to say about that. Like period, full stop, end of statement. It's not about the breed. So those are some of the top things I have learned <laughs> as a dog trainer um, and a positive reinforcement dog trainer at that. I feel like certainly um, there are there are dog trainers out there that do not use positive reinforcement. I, I don't even know. Like I, I'm, I have all the feels about that because, well, not all the feels, but a lot of feels about that because I, I vacillate between anger and sorrow, sadness for these people. Um, it, but mostly for the dogs, I just feel horrible, horrible, horrible for the dogs that are, you know, forced to <sighs> succumb to that kind of training. And, um, certainly I think their list would be different. Um, and not quite as hopeful and motivational, uh, because that's not where they live, right? That's not the headspace they live in. So I think that, Positive reinforcement dog training has changed my life in so many incredible ways. It has helped me to even like, I never, never, never would even like at the time that I started learning about dog training, I was, would read plenty. I read a ton of books about, I mean, I went to school to learn about animal behavior and, um, I, still never would have picked up a motivational or self-help book. I had a block in my mind. I studied psychology and would not have picked up a motivational or self-help book. And today I am so open to all of it. Yeah, there are some gimmicky things out there. I'm not going to, that's not what this is about. I am so much more aligned with improving myself as a person because you know what? Improving myself as a person improves me as a dog trainer. It improves me as a content creator. It helps me to bring you the best version of me, which brings you the best version of information I have available. So um, yeah, my whole motivation change has changed because of becoming a positive reinforcement dog trainer. And I, you know, I prefer to call myself a pet parent coach because training is not the only thing I do. I love it, but it's not the only thing I do. And yeah, I just, I, I, I have found dimensionality. Is that a word? I don't know. In, <laughs> in being a positive reinforcement dog trainer. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and end today's podcast. Thanks so much for sticking around for this because I know, I don't know. I hope it, I hope it makes a big impact on you. Let me know, like reach out to me. You know how to get in touch with me, whether it's rumble or Instagram, TikTok. leave me a comment, leave me a question, whatever it may be. I it, it, pick a video. It doesn't matter. Uh, pick a post. It doesn't matter. Just say, Hey, you know, your podcast about things you've learned like that, whatever you want to say about it after that. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. So, uh, yeah, also, also, um, before I leave, I hope to see you on Patreon. Um, we have a little family over there. I really love it. I am considering posting dual, like whatever I put on Patreon. I think I'm going to also start a locals account. I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of vacillating over it at the moment. I think that there are some platforms. Patreon is, has a lot of new features coming out soon. Um, which I'm very excited about. So that's why I'm I'm I have, I'm kind of hesitant about the locals account. But I think we're going to see some really big changes in social media in the next few years. And I have already like I hardly ever post on Facebook. It's just not. I don't get anything out of it. You don't get anything out. Of it. That's the thing. It's not just that I don't get anything out of it. It's that I see that you're not getting my content, and that is frustrating for me because I feel like. I know sometimes I see a piece of content on social media and it, yeah, it'll send me down a rabbit hole, but that's a good rabbit hole because I needed that information in my life. And 
when you're not getting the content that you sign up to see because of algorithms, because I'm not paying to put it in front of you, whatever it may be that I don't, I don't know. I just, I, I don't, I don't see Facebook being the monstrosity that it has been um, for much longer. So with that, um, let me know where you prefer to get your content. Gosh, I would love to hear that. You can reach out to me on whatever platform. I'm. That's why I've, I'm kind of branching out and trying to be on as many places as I can because you're all on different places. So whether um, you're on Patreon, I would love to see you on Patreon um, because you get a lot more than any other platform, social media platform. Um, or YouTube or Rumble or Instagram or even Facebook because I still get notifications there. Let me know. Like, where are you? Where do you prefer to get your content? Um, TikTok, all the, all the places. Let me know. And again, I do hope to see you over on Patreon. Um, that's my favorite. So with that, I am going to end today's podcast. Until next week, give your pets some extra love from me. Bye, guys. Oh, oh, oh.